Hello everybody, it's Dragana here from Sasebo. Welcome to my channel. Before I start with today's tutorial, I just quickly want to say thank you to everyone who supported me throughout my crafting journey and for all the nice comments you always leave for me. Thank you so much. Today I have a simple and easy sewing project for you. We are going to dress up our journals. What are we making? I hear you asking me. We are making a fabric dust jacket for our journal similar to these two. Let's have a look. It's fabric on this side, fabric on that side and it's padded. It's got that soft squishy feel to it. It protects the cover of our journal but it's also decorative can slide your journal in and out. You can even wash it if it gets dirty. Hmm. Dust jacket. I'm not too keen on that name to be honest. I'd rather call it the journal dress. Have you ever played with those paper dolls as a child? Drawing and cutting out little outfits for them? Let's imagine this project is similar to that. You have a plain or unattractive journal or perhaps you no longer like the looks of it or you just want to protect it so what do you do? You dress it up. I will show you a simple way of doing it that can be applied to any size journal or book and you can certainly take it from there and add various decorative elements and experiment with decorative stitching, ribbons, lace, charms put a closure like I did here see this one has a little a ribbon attached to it I should also mention that with this method you will get a nice crisp corners like this. They're called mitered corners. Quilters should know what I'm talking about. Uh, traditionally or usually you would sew around and leave an opening then turn it inside out and then you have to poke the corners with something and make sure you don't make a hole and you never get a crisp corner you always get it a little bit rounded or uneven and that's something that really annoyed me so I thought this way I get crisp corners I get a little bit of extra cushioning around the journal you see it's a bit bigger than the journal so it's actually good it holds everything in place and I like it like that let's see what we need to make this journal dress I have my list of what I need right here and it says we need journal or a book I suppose so look at this beautiful pages on the inside but look at the cover it's in terrible shape it started peeling off it looks really really bad and two of the corner protectors are missing so I want to make a dust jacket or a journal dress for this journal or diary. Next thing we need is fabric. Here it is. I have this piece of fabric. It's not too thin but it's not too thick either. It is upholstery fabric but it's perfect for actually making these covers something like linen almost and I love the design so I just have to decide whether I want to use this section with the red flower or the one with the orange flower or even that one there so I'll decide that later but when choosing a fabric you have to check for the direction of the design so if you have a piece of fabric for example like this but the design direction of the design is going that way you won't be able really to use it for say this journal so it has to go that way otherwise you you, you know design or the picture whatever it is on that fabric is going to be turned to the side or even you know upside down or something like that so this fabric seems to be going in all directions so I, I'm not really worried too much about it I'll just use the section that I like the color so but keep that in mind when you choose the fabric for your own journal ok 
Okay. So, it says here we need lining. So, we need something for the inside of a dust jacket. And I picked this lovely magenta color. I can see now it goes really beautifully well with this. So, that fabric is going to be on the inside. And we need fabric for this. So, I choose the same as the lining fabric here, but you can certainly even use that one or say do a totally different fabric and have that there but I wanted to use the same and I have another piece and I think that should be enough okay now padding with padding you need something to go in between the fabric and the lining something that will make your jacket a bit thicker you know that will give it that soft feel and I think I looked up on the internet heat and bond ultra hold if you're in the US that would probably be something I'd, I'd use if I had it but I don't have it heat and bond ultra hold is a double-sided iron-on adhesive and it's really preferable for this project you know you, you cut it out you it has a uh, adhesive on both sides so it really would be perfect but I don't have it and I'll show you the alternative way of doing it what I have here is anti-slip rug underlay it's basically polyester fleece and it is a bit sticky on both sides it's used for placing under your rugs to prevent them from slipping and it's perfect thickness, it's about two or three millimeters. That little bit of stickiness works well for me, and uh, it's quite inexpensive. So, you can use just ordinary fleece or you know, whatever you have that similar to this. But, like I said, heat and bond ultra hold would be the best, and this is my second best choice. You will obviously need sewing machine and some thread and tools you need fabric scissors sharp ones not just ordinary scissors that you cut your paper with unless they're sharp and they can cut through the fabric mine don't so I have separate pair of scissors just for fabric you'll need a ruler or a measure tape you'll need something to make marks on the fabric so you can use chalk you can use pencils pens you know, I sometimes find just ordinary pencil works best, or even just an ordinary marker. Do mark on the, the reverse side of the fabric. And we need clips. I have these clips that I use in my sewing project. If you don't have them, you can use ordinary pins. They work just as well. And if you don't have them, but you have these, you can use them as well. And I suppose pegs could do the job as well. But just you need enough because you're going to be placing them all around your um, dust jacket. So, uh, you know, make sure whatever you're using that you have enough for the whole thing. Okay. And you need sewing all. I actually use this to make holes in the in my signatures when I uh, make journals, but also use it when I'm sewing. You know, it's just something that saves your fingers from getting hurt with the sewing machine <laughs> needle. Okay, and it helps push the fabric through easily. We sorted out our tools and materials, and we can proceed to the dress fitting. <laughs> and for that, we need our journal is here and we need the fabric that we plan to use for the lining and that is this one let's put everything else away for now I've placed the lining wrong side down and the right side up and I'm just going to wrap it around I'm gonna wrap it around this journal like so and I'll just put a couple of clips I'm going 
to the other side. do the same with this as well. You won't be able to go all the way but just you know do it as close as you can. doesn't have to be exact this is just to take measurements you're gonna make some marks and then we're gonna undo this your marker or your pencil or your chalk whatever you're using to make marks and first of all mark the corners just a little dot then do a couple here Do it on the right on the cover, not here, not there, but just on the top, and the same here, just a few dots again on this side, dots or lines, whatever. to join them. See? Let's join these. I'm just using ordinary pencil. measurements for the book. We need to add some allowances because when we do this, this has to be wider than the book. This is the width of our book or journal so we need to add about that much, about half an inch. Otherwise 
this would end up being too narrow and you wouldn't be able to slide your journal inside. So we need to add half an inch top and bottom but for the sides we need to add a little bit more. We're going to add three quarters of an inch to the sides. Let's just make a few marks. That's the side sorted out. Now let's see the top and the bottom. It seems to be almost exactly half an inch. Yep. Over here, it's half an inch, half an inch. So on this side, I don't need to cut at all, but this side here, yep seems to be uneven a little bit. So I'll just trim off. Yep. So we have half an inch top and bottom and three quarters of an inch to the side and now we can cut. Just cut where you marked. So, this is your lining and we are going to use this piece as a reference or a pattern for cutting all the other pieces of our journal dress or dust jacket. First we need to cut the padding to right size and of course we're going to use our lining as a guide. I cut this piece of padding just, you know, approximately and it seems to be almost the right size. I don't even know how I managed that. Alright, so just take your scissors and cut away all the excess. I don't think I need to cut. Oh, I do. Just so. Easy peasy. Now we need to make our sleeves. These are the sleeves. That's where you slide in your journal covers. So, and for that, because I want to use the same color as the lining. I'm going to use this and again we are going to use our lining this piece as the guide for cutting this one so we need to cut another exactly the same size piece of fabric as this lining piece so I'll put that away for a second 
so I uh, just you know place it on top they seem to be the same width anyway and I'll just cut here What we do now, we fold this piece in half. You know, you can press it a little bit, you can make little marks and cut, but I'm going to cheat and I'll just cut it like this. That was fast. <laughs> so we take each one of these and then we fold again like so so you take these longer edges and you join them making sure the wrong side is inside and the right side is outside okay press just a little bit and maybe just put a few clips here And we need to do the same on this side. All right. Next step is to take this to the sewing machine and stitch fairly close to the edge. I suppose you don't have to do it but I prefer to do it. It's just going to sit much better if you just do a, like a stitch there. You can do decorative stitches, you can do straight stitch. I love doing zigzag stitch. Let's go this way to my sewing machine. I'm going to line up this edge of my foot with, the, with this edge. And I'm going to place it down. So I chose orange thread on top and magenta like this for the bottom. You can choose any color thread or just use whatever you've got. And I'm going to do zigzag stitch that is about two and a half millimeters wide and the distance between them I chose 1.5 millimeters. And I'll just start slowly and do a little back stitch just to secure the threads. Here we go. Again, back stitch. It's done. This is a really, really old machine from the late 70s that used to belong to my mother. And it does have decorative stitches, but it's so difficult to actually set it all up. So I only use straight stitch or zigzag and it's quite a strong motor, it's almost like semi-professional so I really love it, it's reliable but it is really really old. Okay so that's our stitch. Let's do the other one. Now make sure if you're using different color threads like I'm using here, make sure these are facing each other because you want to have that color thread on the top as well. almost 
there with the cutting. Just one more thing that we need to measure and cut and that is our face. Just to clarify, we're not going to cut off blush and blood face. Just the fabric that we are using as a face cover for our journal. So let's choose how we're going to do this. I really, really want to have this flower on the front. So I need this part of the fabric. All right. So we need to place this fabric that so that the wrong side is facing us like this. Okay. Now, again, we're going to use the lining as a pattern. That's our lining, remember? That one. So, choose where you want approximately. Like if you want to have this flower or that one, I want this one. So, I'm going to place it roughly over there. Like so. Okay. It's probably a good idea to just few pins. Just one in each corner. We need our face to be two inches longer and wider than the lining. So the way to do it is to add one inch on all sides and then we get the right dimension. So let's take our ruler and mark one inch. Away from the line. Then draw a line. Our neighbors are putting up a new roof on their house and I was waiting all day for them for the workers to have a break so that I can record because the noise that I'm that they are making is just distracting me and obviously I didn't get to record everything while they were on a break they started again so I'm really sorry there's a background noise happening I don't want to wait any longer I just want to finish this video okay so we marked one inch on uh, all four sides now we're just going to cut it
there's one more thing we need to do is the corners so we're going to just draw a little line from here to there and then you draw a line here and you cut away this little triangle like that cut away this and then we do the same on each so now that we cut one we can just place it over and cut the same on all four sides our face is done. Let's just do a little test. Nice, I love it. I really like that this flower is going to be right there on the front. Beautiful. Let's pat ourselves on the back and take a little break. I suppose tea or coffee would be nice. What is your favorite hot drink? I love coffee in the morning, but I drink tea during the day and maybe herbal tea, hot chocolate in the evening. So I suppose I like a bit of everything. But before we move on and before I forget, I should mention that I will leave a link in the description box below to my website where you can download this list. It's got uh, materials that you need for this project, how to take measurements and over here you have the steps so if you decide you want to make a dress for your journal and you watch a video you can just uh, print this out or even save it onto your um, phone and just have a quick look all right so just follow the link and it will take you to my website uh, where you can download this for free all right, it might come in handy. You never know. So, enough of chit chat, and let's go back to our project because our journal is naked and cold, and we need to finish her dress quickly. Let's layer all these little elements that we created, just like we'd layer a sandwich or a cake. So, the first layer you place on your desk is the face. So, make sure the right side of the fabric is down, facing down, and the wrong side is up okay have it in the direction the right direction don't have it upside down it might confuse you so this is the direction I want it so it's turned that way now the second layer is our padding here it is this fabric this padding is a little bit sticky so it collects all these little dust particles that I have to get rid of before I continue I just use this. Hmm. It's all these little bits and pieces that are falling off that old journal actually. don't want anything to stay inside that what might bother me later on all right so we place the padding in the middle just make sure it's got one inch space between this edge and that edge all right, this seems to be seems to be all right. So our third layer is our lining. Now that's easy. We just go and place it exactly over the padding. 
we cut them exactly the same so that should be easy there it is and the fourth layer is of course our sleeves there we go you see on this side I use red thread and on this I use this yellowish orange because I want wanted, I wanted that effect so you take our sleeves and you have these parts with the stitching facing each other and the raw edges you place line up with the this edge of the lining okay just like so that's our cake <laughs> now we should probably put a few pins just to make sure nothing moves The reason I said heat and bond would be better because once you heat it and bond it to your fabric obviously it's not going to move this way. Before you finalize the project you have to make sure everything stays where it should be. So the old fashioned way which is pins. We have two more steps left to do. First one we need to prepare everything for the final stitching. So I like to start this part working from the sides and not just anywhere on the sides, from the centers. Hope you can see well. So you take this allowance, this fabric is fraying a little bit, and you fold it in half so that this edge meets that edge of the lining, so, like so. And then you fold over the sleeves and put a clip so in half to meet the edge of the lining in the sleeve and then over okay now let's do the other side bring it closer you fold this allowance in half to meet the edge here and then you fold it over to actually measure and cut correctly okay I can probably take these out now because I have these clips holding it in place I'll leave these for a while here we do the same we fold in half and then over and we do it at the centers let's do it this way this one as well And, and just clip it. Alright, now the corners. That is a little bit tricky, but it's doable. It's not that difficult actually. I just, before I continue, I just realized that the sleeve is a little bit hanging over the lining. So I need to trim this because it's gonna get in the way. So I'll just cut off a sliver. I forgot to check this. But yeah. I'll have to check here. They seem to be alright. Just here that it was sticking out a little bit. Alright, so now we have this situation. So what we need to do now is take this corner and fold like that 
and then we do the same as we did before we fold in half like so and then over so that this edge meets that edge and you get a perfect mitered corner all right so i'll show you again hopefully i'll be able to do it closer up so you have this situation here you get this part and you fold it so that you create like a triangle and then you fold that in half and over and you get that perfect mitered corner and then you clip it there that wasn't that hard let's do all of the corners While you add it, you might as well add a few clips all the way around. And it's important to take your time with this. Don't rush it. You know, if it's not working, just, you know, undo it and start again. And, uh, you know, it's okay to spend a little bit more time preparing than actually to go to a sewing machine and start stitching and then everything moves and it's not right and buckles and things like that. So it's better if you just make sure you get this step Add a few more clips all the way around where there's like big areas without clips. It's just easier later on. Let me do stitching. All four of our corners and the, the allowance for the face is secured. We set it all up. And now we just have to do the last step which is stitching. Let's go over to the sewing machine. I'm here at my sewing machine and um, I'm getting ready to do the final stitch. So the best way to do it is actually to start you know, uh, in the middle of the longer edge. Do not start at the corners because uh, the nature of the fabric and the sewing, you know, it might, as you work, add a few millimeters on and then you get at the end extra fabric and it's going to buckle up and it's not going to look good so i always start somewhere around the middle and i'm going to line this side of the foot with this edge of the fabric again i'm going to be using the same stitch zigzag stitch like i did here so two and a half millimeters wide and one and a half millimeters long all right, and also I have this orange thread on top and the red one in my bobbin. For this step, get your all ready. You might need it to push the fabric and if something slips this way or that way, you can push it easily and don't pu put your fingers there <laughs> because accidents happen, trust me, I know it. So we start and we won't do back stitching because we're going to go all the way around and we'll finish at the same spot where we started and then we can secure the stitch. So for now we just go forward. Uh. 
and as you go just remove the tips and the pins. and use your awl to hold it in place it's good to stop just for a second to check So we come to the first corner. Now we have to take this clip off, but hold it, hold both of these ends with your fingers and then press with the awl. You don't want them to move because then you might have to stop and try and uh, fix it before you stitch. So just go slowly and push. So slowly, 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 and go a bit further, further, further. I think one more. Yeah. Now make sure your needle is in before you lift the foot, because we're gonna turn it now. All right. So you turn it, and then you press down the foot, and you see it's right where it should be. Sometimes if it's not, you might have to turn it back and do another stitch and then continue. my breath as I'm doing this I'm gonna faint <laughs> oops just to turn it oh no so you see what I mean I'm not all the way there so I have to do one more, like so. That's better. Where did my camera go?
we've gone all the way around and we came to where we started so we're going to go a few times up and down just to secure that stitch so it doesn't unravel like so let's assess oh it look, looks nice it looks, it looks nice and the corners look good voila our general dress is finished and it's beautiful I really like the contrast, the red against that white and over here we have the orange looking good but let's try it on here's our journal I just realized look at this 1996 wow it's really old no wonder it's in bad shape oh look it's perfect it's a perfect fit and this end just help. really really good nice and squishy it's so much better than it was don't you think I might even use it as it is wow I'm actually very happy with the result. If I wanted to, I could add some other elements to this now, like a ribbon here and here for the closure. I could add some charms, maybe here on the spine, over there. Maybe some uh, lace flowers, buttons, you know, anything to make it even more interesting. But I think this fabric is beautiful as it is, so I'm not going to do anything to it at the moment. This is the, the step where you get to play and take it further if you really want to but we covered the basis we come to the end of this tutorial i hope you found value and inspiration in it and i really hope you made it to the end without skipping <laughs> i do it too <laughs> i just skip to the interesting parts but don't forget to download your free instructions if you want to attempt to make um, a dress for your journal the this the link is in the description box below and I'm going to make myself a nice warm cup of coffee now and I'm going to sit in the garden and simply enjoy the sunshine and what seems to be the last of the warm weather for this year I can sense the cold days and autumn approaching fast if you have time I suggest go outside stretch your legs perhaps your neck inhale some fresh air even if all you can do is stick your face out through the window you know just get that fresh air for today thank you so much for joining me today and i'll see you in my next video bye for now